Okay. I'd like to call to order the Douglas Zoning Board of Appeals meeting on Wednesday, August 12th at 7.05 p.m. And um, tonight we're going to have a presentation from, uh, from Bob from EDC. And the floor is yours, Bob. Okay. Well, I guess I know how U.S. Attorney General Barr feels like uh, in front of test testifying <laughs> in front of Congress. <laughs> um, we're kinder. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, we all know who the zoning board is and what they do. Same with the planning board, uh, selectman, town engineer, um, our building commissioner, police fire chief. What not many people know is who the EDC is. So with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I would like to at least um, explain what the EDC is, what we do, yep. go right uh, ahead. who we are, and what we do. Yep, go right ahead. Uh, the EDC consists of five members, uh, Luke McNeil, Carol Gugolinski, Paul Peterson, Brad Maltz, and myself. Uh, we are a volunteer commission responsible for the development of economic activity in Douglas, hence our name, the Economic Development Commission. Some people do know who we are. Right after Prop 2 and a half, I joined the EDC. Um, Actually, the real story on that is Bill Cundiff forced me into the EDC. <laughs> was that right after Prop Two and a Half? Prop it Two and a Half. Yeah. Right after What's Prop that? Two and a Half. I didn't uh, realize. I that. went into Bill's office uh, complaining, and he says, "I have a job for you." <laughs> and it's Lucky been guy. all downhill since. I thought I retired, but I guess I <laughs> didn't. Uh, within a short time, the EDC received some real nasty emails after Prop Two and a Half. <laughs> Uh, they accused us of doing nothing. Uh, they've accused us um, that we need to attract business to, to increase our commercial tax base. I mean, there were some nasty emails in there. Uh, at that time, I just retired from 33 years in the airlines, and my first thought was, I can't shake these unruly passengers. <laughs> They're following me home. Oh. Um, I have a quick question for any of you. Uh, have any of you been on the Lackey Dam exit, uh, exit 4 off Route 46 lately? Have you noticed the yeah. long line of cars heading for this building to knock our doors down to uh, build business in Douglas? Oh, yeah, he's tripping all over them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that so line doesn't been, exist. It's always it's, been a problem. It's non existent. Mm -hmm. um, Business doesn't come to Douglas. We, we have to go to them. We have to go to them. Um, it's a fact of life that the majority of businesses will not approach the town or the EDC to locate or relocate in Douglas. Some will, but most won't. We've had a few inquiries. Uh, they approach us. Uh, Bill has sent some people my way. Matt Wojcik has sent people our way. Uh, we investigate, but for the most part, they're small, they're not big ones, you have to go after the big fish. Um, usually a business does not come to you, you have to go to them. The EDC must be proactive and reach out to them with an attractive offer, or at the very least, a plan. Something that's a tough sell. And it's a tough sell, Douglas, because our infrastructure is not there. We don't have... Um, for instance, I just talked to a developer yesterday up on uh, the top end of um, Davis Street. His first question, do you have water, sewer, gas up there? You know, my answer, no, <laughs> but we're working on it. So, And we don't have water, sewer, gas in that area. We need to upgrade a lot of systems. Our infrastructure is not there right now to support a lot of business that we can have. Mm -hmm. But we're working on it. We'll get there, but it'll take time. Uh, individual landowners could attract business, but most won't. Abutting landowners will not get together to form an attractive assemblage. In reality, they're actually against each other. They compete with each other because they want that one nugget of small business and the heck with their neighbor when they can get it on their property. So they're actually in competition with each other. So the EDC must be proactive in assembling properties, talking to abutting landowners, getting them together to form a much larger and attractive assemblage so an offer can be made to attract business. Uh, Carol Gogolinski and I did that 
just did that two years ago. We assembled uh, 185 acres uh, behind Grainy Tech. We talked to actually six landowners. It would have been 205 acres. Uh, but one landowner that, let's just say that's another story for another day. Uh, we assembled 185 acres, got everybody on board, and that property is being marketed. And I would say um, that in the very near future, uh, they'll be paying big dividends on that 185 assemblage. Um, big dividends. For you Trump fans out there, we'll call it huge dividends. <laughs> I guess now I have to say I approve this message. <laughs> um, I can't speak for past EDC commissions. I've only been here for three years. Uh, and I have to be very careful how I phrase this as I don't want to send you the wrong impression and I don't want to imply any blame whatsoever. But very little was accomplished as far as large projects. Now, in their defense, this is due to the fact that the town finances the last 20 years were in pretty good shape. You were on the finance committee. You weren't looking for money. We had it. Well, we, we weren't floating really? in it, but the town was in pretty good financial shape, not we dire We kept straight. ourselves small right. and lived within right. our budget. We lived within our means, and it was a comfortable budget. Right. There was no need for the EDC to go out and look for big projects. There was no need for it. There was no need to go out and get assemblage of properties. Prop two and a half changed that, and it you know, changed I, it I, overnight. I, I need to talk to you about prop two and a half. I think I think you're misstating one thing, and I just want to explain it to you since I have been in finances mm -hmm. for a while. I think you're 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 using prop two and a half as when we pass the override. Right. Okay. I, I couldn't figure that out. I was, I'm going, wait a minute, he hasn't been on there for that long. That what happened? Three, that was three Suddenly, years ago, wasn't okay, it? So the old, the, how to explain that, Bob, is, is when the override passed. Prop two and a half went into effect, I believe, in 1981. Uh, and that's when the cities and towns voted that they didn't want the entire property tax in the town to go up more than two and a half percent. Right. We had it. We overrode it three years ago in the town of Douglas. That is what I'm referring to okay, as that, our override the three term years would ago. The proper would be the override. The override. Otherwise, okay. you're going to confu confuse me because you, you confused me. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the correction. Yeah, you're welcome. But that is what I'm referring to, and that's um, and that's the next week I was in Bill's office, and then it was all downhill from yeah. there. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> I've been actually having fun. Um, so that it prop two and a half, the override changed things quickly. Uh, during the past several years, I have approached many businesses to get them to relocate to Douglas. Sutton attracted Prime Metals uh, from Worcester in this very fashion. Uh, Prime Metals, as you know, they were a metal fabricator processor, and they were looking to expand. Uh, their property taxes were going up in Worcester, so Sutton just jumped in and said, hey, we've got a perfect piece of property for you in an industrial park on Gilmore Drive. We're running gas up there. They got a MassWorks grant to run natural gas up there. And Prime Meadows is now relocated. They're building, we're in the process of building on Gilmore Drive, a nice tax incentive uh, for the town of Sutton. Um, but they do processing assembly inside and outside a building. Now keep that thought in mind, because I will be coming to that. Um, I was negotiating with a large cannabis greenhouse cultivator, similar to the proposed facility in Chowton. Now the one in Chowton, um, they were going to plan on building three campuses. We were in the running for one of them. And in the example in Charlton was $20 million in five years of tax revenue. That's, that's a pretty chunk, good chunk of change. That's how much money is in these, some of these cannabis grow facilities. That fell through the cracks for reasons beyond my control. Um, zoning issues usually pop up. Sometimes it's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Uh, Fred Hudnack's uh, lot 165.15, uh, which is 130 acres of that 180 project 185, um, half of that property was residential, half was zoned industrial. 
well, you can't have a company come in and pay for the whole thing and only build on half of it. So the EDC got involved in that and we pushed through a rezone on that. That passed through one of the town meetings. I don't know if it was annual or special, doesn't matter. It just, it passed. So now it's all zoned industrial. That will be paying big, big dividends here pretty soon. Um, you don't know if your zoning bylaws work until you attempt to negotiate with outside businesses. If the EDC is not active, the current zoning bylaws are just fine. They're not truly tested. They're just sitting there. Uh, the past few years that I've been in the weeds with these businesses, you quickly discover that what worked many years ago does not work well now. Um, a prime example is the one we'll be discussing tonight. Um, manufacturing use, con uh, assembly, processing inside a building. I believe that was formed back in 2004 when we had a salvage company uh, doing business in Douglas. And they would take apart buildings, process wood, which contained possibly lead, lead paint, asbestos. So that's where the wording came from, conducted inside a building. Well, here we go 20 years later, and now it's hurting us. So that's why the EDC has sponsored a, a zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, the reason zoning bylaw amendments become necessary, where each individual town zoning bylaws have morphed into the most current document, adapting the language to fit their specific needs, situations, uh, then making course corrections as conflicts uh, surface. Um, I spent the last three nights looking at um, a lot of other town zoning bylaws. Uh, it's from Sturbridge to Natick, uh, as far as north as uh, Wales and Lunenburg, just looking at their zoning bylaws. And it's from A to Z. N no two towns are alike. Um, I kind of like ours. Um, some people don't, but I, I kind of like our format. I was telling them build that today. I think we have a nice format, the table that I uh, passed out. We're the only town with a nice table. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. You can go into an item, go across, and it's there. I looked at Sturbridge. Sturbridge has commercial, chapter seven, industrial, chapter eight, um, residential A, chapter nine. And I mean, you get to go through each chapter and it, it's cumbersome. It, and I spent the I was up to two o'clock last night looking at Sturbridge and I'm just shaking my head going, I appreciate what we have in our green book right now. Are you aware of the reasoning why that was done that way? Um, no, but I'm glad somebody did do it that way. Well, we had um, really the preeminent person who works with town and zoning. Uh, uh, Bombrowski? Bombrowski. Yeah. Uh, that worked, had, with the, worked with the town. I had a chance the, to meet him. And a very, the very knowledgeable man. Yeah, very. And, and he, you know, he did a pretty good job. Um... No two town zoning bylaws are the exact same as I found out. Um, I must admit, I like our format much better than anyone else's, but that doesn't mean our zoning bylaws are perfect. Uh, one final comment, uh, Bill Cundiff and I attended a meeting in Sutton last year, last fall, I believe. And there's a proposed um, two large warehouse project going on Mary Bedoin's property. Uh, it's directly opposite Pine Sand and Gravel on the Uxford side. There's an 800,000 square foot building and a 500,000 square foot building going on there. Well, Douglas has a little corner of that section. That's why we we're invited to this meeting. We, our property line crosses 146 with a little wedge into Uxbridge. Most of this project will be in Uxbridge, some in Sutton, Mm -hmm. some in a little piece and we're hoping for the building so we get more tax return as opposed to a parking lot uh, in Douglas and, and luckily the building is on, on our property. Uh, as Bill and I sat in that meeting and the, the two architects for the two buildings were going back and forth with their with to-do list what they needed, um, I can honestly say that Sutton and Oxbridge were scrambling. 
they were writing down things to do to get on to their uh, soon to be uh, special town meeting and Bill and I are just sitting there twiddling our thumbs because our zoning bylaws allowed everything. So in, in that respect, we had some good zoning bylaws, uh, but they do need tweaking. They need to be updated. Um, and I'll give you some examples uh, later on. Um, I've always said if our zoning laws of lemons, you're going to make lemonade out of it. And some of these changes or amendments we're trying to make, it's just going to make the lemonade sweeter. Um, that's basically all I have as far as what the EDC has been up to, what we do, um, why there are some changes coming down the road. Uh, the big change right now is, is uh, D1. Uh, which if you look on your uh, page three in your pamphlet I, uh, I passed out to you. <coughs> D1 is any manufacturing use including processing, fabrication, assembly conducted inside a building. We spent two weeks on where the comma should be and where there is no comma. That's how, that's how much in depth we got into this thing. Yeah, I think these two gentlemen to my right are well aware of what we went through. We're just meeting after meeting after meeting, pounding our head with town council. Like, how do we read this, you know, and how do you interpret it? The easy way to do this is just make a 1A, and that's what the ED, EDC uh, suggested, and change the word inside to outside, so now we're covered. We can do a lot of projects. Prime metals, if you remember what I said, they fabricate and process inside and outside a building. Technically, we could not attract prime metals to Douglas with the wording that exists at this minute right now. If we had somebody who wanted to assemble picnic tables outside a building, can't do it. If Solar Wolf had a big array and they had to assemble panels outside the building, they couldn't do it. So we're kind of handcuffing industry or businesses in one respect, and we can't attract businesses unless we do a minor change here. Hence the reason for the zoning bylaw amendment, which is being in the process right now, which will be tomorrow night at the planning board. Uh, the other thing I found out looking through a lot of... Um, Bob, can I just interject? Sure. Just for clarity, it's not exactly the same. So when you look at the district columns, the proposal is not mirroring what's there for. Oh, that's what I was gonna. That was my question. Inside a building, so yeah. so the outside a building is only proposed in industrial in the industrial district, mm -hmm. yes. and gotcha. that's by special permit. permit. So, so we can control. So it's it. BA industrial, right? yeah. Under planning board. I don't interpret that the way he described it. PB. What's that? The bylaw that's there now. Because As, wait, no, yep. Because the way it, it's written, it says any manufacturing use, comma, including the other thing. So why is it? This doesn't say it's only inside a building. It says it's including inside. It I agree you with you one hundred percent. We went around. Thank you, no, but I'm just commas. <laughs> Thank you. Because it has, says comma, you stop. Yeah. yeah. And it includes the processing and fabrication and assembly right. conducted inside a building. Thank you there very much. There is nothing that says outside a building. That's my opinion as well. Well, uh, that's why the comma is there. Right. Town Council disagrees with the both of us. Really? Yep. Yep. Do they? Uh, I, and when you start going against town council, you're kind of hanging it out there. Yeah. So, did anyone call Mark Babowski? Uh, we Babrowski? did. I mean, we, we relied on our land use our council. Our land use council. Yeah. That works with us regularly. And I did check with an English teacher. <laughs> she Good agrees with but, you. But and I, I do have to say that um, <laughs> I believe he was partners with Babrowski. Yes, he was. Babrowski did this. Yes, he was. So. Well, but if you go right back to the original source, yeah. there, there is an intent in that sentence that he wanted to, you know, and, give and this, to Douglas. And this has been and hammered was, out over a course of four weeks, and trust this, me. And we this, and this inside a building. It's not stop. This is one thing. This is one thing. It's all of I'm, not, I'm not following what you mean. 
Because it, it's making any manufactured use, okay, including processing, fabrication, and assembly conducted inside a building. That's how I interpret. I see. Okay, so so does that mean you can't do it outside a building? You can't do it outside a building. It doesn't say that. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say it's that. True. I disagree. Yeah, I disagree too. I disagree with that. It says any manufacturing use, comma, including. These well, well, so they included what's going on inside a building. If you ask a hundred people, you're inside, you, can, you don't you know. You get going. two different answers. Well, well, yeah. well, there's there's people that are, you know, considering work in Douglas. You find that sentence concerning to them. Yeah. Okay. So well, what kind obviously, of uh, what kind of the people that it's affecting? What what's their concern? What are they going to do outside the building that would be a concern? They won't. They won't come here. Period. So what are they going to do? What manufacturing are they doing outside a building that we're worried about inside? Prime Metals is an ex a perfect example. Okay. So what do they do? I don't know. I know the name. Oh, Prime so Metals, they, they, um, I don't know they, they fabricate steel structures. Uh, okay. They'll um, take pieces of metal and, and make a uh, window frame or structure, clamp it up, okay. and then weld it. They fabricate. They process metal. Uh, they're a metal fabricator. Okay. Um, if, if they get really bogged down on work, which they have done in Worcester, they will move their work outside. Yeah. If the weather's good. Yeah, I don't know why would a, I mean, I, I guess I'd, I'd wonder why Douglas would have, by virtue of someone writing it for us, why, it, why that would be part of our bylaws that it wouldn't be allowed outside. And, you know, I'm trying to figure out Again, what the purpose of that was? It doesn't make sense. I think because they put the comma in there, and they, it's a, it also includes what goes on inside the building. Yeah. It doesn't exclude what goes on outside the building. Huh. So the other thing is, that, I, that's, I think that's how I. I, think, I read yeah. it. And Bob, if, I, if you don't mind. Yeah. Bob has done a tremendous amount of research with other towns' bylaws. Right. And he has portrayed to me that. This is not unique language. It's not unique. Okay. We are the only town that has those last four words conducted inside a building. Uh, right. Charlton, I believe, has the exact wording. Stops, period, after assembly. Hmm. So you can construe that to mean inside or outside. It's not specific. We went specific, I believe, because of the salvage operation. Well, the salvage operation is not here anymore, and yeah. it's it's tying our hands right now. <clears throat> it's hurting us. I, I, I will tell you what I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess that Mark Wabrowski probably wrote the Charlton one, too, and he that he... That probably wrote most of them. Yes, yeah, he probably, probably did, did yeah. because everybody was going to him. Now, a and lot of times... Either, either he refined ours, and ours was after, or ours was, was before, and he took it out of the ones after. Or maybe we put it in. I, I don't know the history of it. Uh, a lot of towns do not have this in there. Uh, a lot of towns do have any manufacturing use, period. We put in processing, fabrication, and assembly. We kind of broke it down a little more. And then we put a restriction on it. This written by Mark Bobrowski. I, I assure you that ta the townspeople of Douglas did not write stuff into this. Now you look at Oxford. We relied on it, the expert. It, it could have been the issue he referred to early with the sal salvage operation. That, Maybe. That it didn't. That. And it's good that he added all these fabrication assembly because if he didn't add them, it's prohibited. Yeah. It was uh. not listed here. Uh. It's prohibited. Yeah. yeah. In a lot of towns, you talk about Sutton. Sutton's list is there's like 50 things on the industrial use because yeah. they wanted to list every everything, thing, and they wanted to show what zone you could do it in. Mm -hmm. So now Uxbridge happens to be the worst. They have Uxbridge, nothing yeah. listed. That's <laughs> not unusual. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, personally, I don't have a problem with doing it outside. I guess the problem I have is that it's such a it now has drawn attention to itself, all right? Mm -hmm. And we know nothing about the project or projects. It could be two. I don't know. Um, and I'm not used to working that way. Um, and the town, I mean, this area, I don't even know what area you're talking about. 
actually for the, anywhere for, for this anyone anywhere anywhere well yeah, industrial zones. so industrial zones. Industrial some, zones. There's some industrial zones that are close to actually the one that we just changed the zoning to it's fairly close to residential that's so, why okay, so what are they permit, doing so we have control over it but so you have to watch out what they're doing outside <clears throat> that could impact the residential that's why it's special permit and yeah, not by be. right right yeah. Go ahead, Mike. There was a reason for that. Yeah. Bob, on, on this and just getting to the, this piece of paper that you got for the uh, advertisement for tomorrow's meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. I just look to see. I've seen it on here somewhere. Oh, all right. <clears throat> so there's an asterisk after, after the table, second, yes. a second section. Says in addition, the general special permit criteria, the planning board shall review any such application under the landscaping requirements for the property line standards under section 5.3.3. Is that uh, what about the site plan review? And the reason why I'm bringing that up is just that Pam just mentioned uh, close proximity to residential, and if you're talking a metal fabrication business that's outside whether they're using grinders or whatever noise is going to be an issue for the abutting neighbors so that they is have in some input it's Excuse either 5.33 or 5.4 the noise smell all mm -hmm. that stuff yeah. oh, that's, that's a that reason that's okay. the reason yeah. that's in there yeah, that's, that's reference that i wasn't familiar yeah, with those two sections whether or not that was the environmental was section was on but site plan review is not is there a reason why we don't have site plan review? The both if, both it triggers, if it triggers site plan review, it will trigger site plan review, and there's three thresholds that trigger that. Yeah. Percent impervious, number of parking spaces, and change of use of 500 square feet, 500 square feet. Or, yeah. or more. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's there always. So if they trigger site plan review, they'll still have to get site plan review. Well, I would, I would well. Can't assume there's going to be a building because they want to work outside the building, so it doesn't necessarily have to have one. But the uh, parking, the park bathrooms, and everything else, it should trigger. Why wouldn't we put in there site plan review? So then you would address any noise concerns from the abutting neighbors. Well, the noise would be under the environmental performance okay. standards. Okay. But we wouldn't want to put in site plan review. <laughs> This is the environmental performance standards. You've got noise, solid waste, yeah. miscellaneous standards, which is lighting, cinders, dust, fumes, gases, odor, smoke, radiation, refuse, other waste materials. Hmm. Um, so as part of the special permit process, they would have to meet all, meet the all of these. Or at least address them, the yes. concerns of abutting neighbors and stuff. Correct. Yes. Okay. And like Bill said, three things would condition, con um, Trigger. trigger the site plan review anyways okay. just like anything else I just want to make sure that if, if you're talking about especially if it's like a metal fabrication business that's extremely noisy I don't know if you did it but I did it mm -hmm. for 16 years so I uh, <laughs> have death from doing it um, cool. watch out <laughs> um, so I just want to make sure that if we're wherever the properties may be uh, like uh, ginger howlers over on uh, Davis Street yeah. Across from 116, across the street is industrial. Right. So if somebody was up, I don't know if she'd hear it, but um, somebody along that street, it could bother them. So just mm -hmm. to make sure that they have input into. Right. And there's an industrial section, um, uh, 43 acres off of Monroe Street. Mm -hmm. It's in the island. Right. Um, it's a long, thin piece. Yeah, they talk about mini storage over there. We, we want to keep that special permit so yeah. a noisy person can come in there and disturb yeah. residences on three around. sides. Yeah. And it's right up against Oxford. You, you'd be yeah. affecting residents in Oxford as well. So that's why it is special permit. So Not to be rude. I'm it can be rude. Oxford, I'm just concerned. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I did the 185 yeah. acres, I did actually sit down with some of those people in Oxbridge yeah. to yeah. be good neighbors. Absolutely. Yeah. But you're on that thing, but for what we're doing here, that's all. Right. So the, the um, if you want to discuss the zoning bylaw amendment and the revision to that zoning bylaw amendment proposed, um, 
I've got a timetable here if you're interested, if you want to follow me through on uh, from day one how we progressed through this. Does it have all the blood, sweat, and tears on it, too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bill will pass that. No, Thank you. <laughs> they were coming that way. Oh, sorry. You want one, Kevin? What's that? You want one? No, I'm good. I've seen it. Yeah, just checking. Thank you, though. Oh, no problem. And we started this whole process uh, after we got done with town council and meeting after meeting after meeting. Um, BDC finally sat down, proposed this uh, zoning bylaw amendment, which was what you see in the present form, but it had BA for Zoning Board of Appeals as the special permit granting authority. We passed it on to the Board of Selectmen the next night, June 23rd. They passed it on to the planning board for their public hearing on the July 15th. Prior to that, uh, Bill and I made sure we had all the newspaper articles, all the adjacent towns were notified, uh, and we went strictly by this document. Uh, if I can find it. This document by the Department of Housing and Community Development, it outlines how a town amends a zoning bylaw, and we followed this to the T. So now it's in the hands of uh, the planning board on July 15th. They opened up the public hearing. Um, that day we also got an email from um, Pam on stating that's the first time she heard of it. Uh, I believe in transparency. Um, I apologize for not advising this board earlier. Uh, we weren't required to, but you did on the next one. I did send a courtesy email on the next one. Um, on Wednesday, July 15th, the planning, planning board continued the public hearing their only recommendation was to change the special permit granting authority from zoning board to planning board. Um, the I have a question on that? Yeah, go ahead. Just curious, why, what was that decision for? Wouldn't typically the, uh, because it's land use, go through the zoning board? That's a question for them. I was kind of taken by surprise that it went that way. Uh, we are expecting that to go through with no resistance, and it, it hit resistance. Hmm. Well, um, so I'll just leave it at that. Well, no, I, I don't think it was resistance. I think they agree with the concept. They just thought there was a streamlined process in the event that site plan review did get triggered. Then they could be both site plan review and special permit granting authority and have one-stop shop. Yeah, they mentioned one-stop shopping, and um, um, I think we've done that. We d we purposely changed some things, like so the it make it window. that's it's, correct. Yeah. And and I mean, it makes total sense. Yeah. You know, to 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 shift shift the special permit authority to the planning board when there's a lot so much more that they have to do. So the easiest thing to do there was to um, just stop the whole process over and um, do another public notice advertising for another public hearing. Just change the wording from zoning board to planning board in two places, the exact same proposal. Mm -hmm. EDC had a uh, special meeting, passed it on to the selectmen, because now we're running out of time. Time yeah. is critical right now to get this on the um, town warrant for the September. Why? What's program. coming in? Tune in Tuesday, select my meeting. There was an announcement. I've, been, I've had an invitation to do that a couple of days ago. It would have been um, last night, but the um, uh, finance board took away the. Preempted? <laughs> they did a joint meeting with the finance uh, board of selectmen and the finance committee on Monday night. Yeah. So now we push this announcement to next Tuesday. 
Just the timing, it's not a lot of time. No, there isn't I'm a lot of time. You have publications, you've got finance recommends, <laughs> and uh, right, right now we're running it down to the wire to get this on the town warrant. Mm. So uh, tomorrow night is the, um, the night, the planning board uh, public hearing, and I believe what the p planning board will do is open up both hearings, the continued hearing and the new hearing, get comments, get input, Make it close the hearings and make a decision. How are people going to give input when they don't know what they're talking about? This is not making any sense they, to me in my little pea brain. All you need to know is this is a bylaw amendment to go inside and outside a building. Okay. We're not addressing okay. a specific That's right. project. That's gotcha. So, so it's not allowed by right, and, mm -hmm. and so, so there is a process to vet a proposal, regardless of the proposal. Right. And it could be approved or it could be denied. Mm -hmm. if, if the planning board finds it unattractive to the town or they find out that, you know, there's too many negatives than positives, they could deny it. Okay. And as a special permit, it's, it's not, the applicant's not entitled to it. Mm -hmm. And it's a super majority vote, you know, all of that. Yeah, this is not a specific project. This is for all projects. In the future. In the future. But it was generated for a specific. It was triggered by something. <laughs> well, you know, just be honest about it, that's all. It's, if it wasn't, you wouldn't be here. Because, as you said at the beginning of your, of your statement, that well, I plan on coming you. through sooner or later with a car, car wash. The same thing with a car wash. We have nothing to do with car wash. I have a car wash business approached us several months ago. They're not in this book anywhere. They're not by right. Probably should have got it on the town warrant for a zoning change. Well, there's only so many hours in the day. <laughs> Apparently, because we get this the day before tomorrow's meeting. But that's okay. But that will be coming up sooner or later. I looked at all these other towns. Every town specifically lists car wash. Douglas, nothing. We have a few spots that would be perfect for car washes. We don't have any. We have water sewer there. No car wash. Be a great revenue producer for the town. Can I ask you, uh, will tomorrow night's meeting be televised uh, at, uh, um, on cable. right on cable? Yes, like, it'll it, be both I'm on going. YouTube and Avaya. Okay, so so people... It's not on the Douglas Cable channel. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. 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 Yeah, Okay. Thank you. Was I under the assumption that you're getting pushed back from the planning board in regards to this? Uh, no. Okay. No. The, their only recommendation was the, um, to change the original version, which had zoning board to change it to planning board for one-stop shopping. Well, there was some discussion actually to broaden the scope and allow it by special permits in other districts and you know Bob and I were making arguments to let's let's take that as step two let's focus on this as step one mm -hmm. yeah well, several people asked if we could include it special permit in a commercial zone and I said we have had zero activity in commercial zones and if you look at a zoning map there's only four areas of commercial zone one on the Webster line one, it, the big one is at the schools, which you will have no activity there next to a school other than maybe a solar farm. And the other two commercial districts, uh, there's a big one on Gilboa Street, yeah. um, which is no activity there. We've had zero activity for commercial. So why would you invite yeah. a butters to a commercial area to possibly yeah. have negative nay votes? 
so we just wanted to keep it simple mm -hmm. baby steps if you if if it comes to the point where we get activity for commercial we'll, we'll run another zoning bylaw amendment change to include the commercial district but right now let's just keep it simple at industrial Where were we? July fifteenth. Um, <laughs> Did you get through this? No, you went to twenty. You went to twenty-one. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, sixteen to twenty-one is when we had the discussions. Um, yeah. And here we. Twenty-one is when I sent uh, Chairman Dan Heaney a. Um, a courtesy um, zoning bylaw amendment that would be the revision to the proposed the original proposed okay. the rest is just telegram newspaper legal notices uh, mm -hmm. the board of selectmen meeting was August 12th and um, I'm sorry the zoning board is tonight and tomorrow will be the planning board I look at other towns. I looked at three basic areas in all these town zoning bylaws. I looked at manufacturing, I looked at wholesale warehouse, and I looked at car wash. Every town pretty much has wholesale warehouse, period. That's it. Two words. Douglas has wholesale warehouse distribution or storage facility, comma, including storage warehouse. So, covered it all. I guess we did. Yeah. We, we just seem to complicate things. Uh, we have a big line item on most of our items, and other towns have two words wholesale, distribution, it depends, facility. It on who was making the motion. If you go back and you look at the motion that uh, Mitch, Bowen, uh, Mitch Cohen made for the uh, signed bylaw, mm -hmm. that's complicated. I don't know if anybody remembers when he did, did that yeah. whizzes and, and all this other stuff that he was uh, kind of animated when he was when he was saying it. Yeah. But it's all, just say so you don't want an electronic sign. Just cut it down to that. Um, so I get that this is this is just a courtesy to come by and tell us because it's under discussion. There's no vote needed uh, needed by us. Right. There's no I vote mean, needed by you. On the frustration that 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 comes out during the process is not being included in, in any part of it to get some input from us, which would be helpful for you because where we start looking at it, we're the, the last stop when somebody's trying to appeal it. That's what our board does. Um, so we should have some input as to, to help you a little bit with the process. And that's why I'm asking you the different questions that I'm asking. That's why I'm making the statement saying the way I read this, it's already allowed. What are we changing? I still stand by that because of that comma that's in there. If that comma wasn't in there, mm -hmm. then I would be, all right, you're inside a building. It says any manufacturing use, comma. And then it goes on to the other description. So we're in agreement in that. Yes. But just as you go forward with other zoning proposals or changes, it may be helpful for you to include us into it to, to help you through that process. And then whether it's me by myself or other members, don't get frustrated through this. we got 24 hours. Let's go. And I do have that down. In the future, zoning board involved or at least notified upcoming zoning board um, yeah. zoning bylaw amendments. Yeah. You sent in the uh, email on the 21st of July. We met before that. Yeah. So there's no way that we would have it. Maria's not even in. So it's got to go from him to Maria, circulated through us. Mm -hmm. He can't send it to us. It's in violation of the open meeting law. So in all fairness, we didn't get notified as a group. The chairman did. But. Because I kind of look at it as the finance committee. Again, I've got experience there. Uh, acts as sort of a... a when we when we see information coming to the from the town to the residents, we 
we're a good compilation of people. It kind of gives you an idea of the questions that are going to come up, what people are going to complain about, how things are going to, you know. So, so, so you can amend your thought process and go, oh, I didn't think of that. You know, mm -hmm. the more the merrier. Almost. Oh, I, I firmly believe that. You know, the more input yeah. you have, the better yeah. decision you can make. Yeah. Well. I don't think it would be necessary for all of us to attend all of them. And no. Have another member that would like to go or two members. A liaison. Yeah, and yep. have them come back to us after and yeah. discuss it at a uh, meeting. Good you know? idea. So rather than having two meetings together, because we'd have to. Yeah. So. Well, just to be notified. Uh, no, true, but I and, and you're right. You're, some you're, response you're right, Mike, because it's it's something that, in the very end, if we don't have, if they ask us a question that we, we not, we didn't write this. Mm -hmm. Someone else did. Did we think of that question before? Mm -hmm. And of course, and we didn't, because we had nothing to do with it. Right. I just I would just like to see some outreach to us. Yeah. That's all. You know, mm -hmm. I don't object outside of the comma. Mm -hmm. um, I, I read it the same way, but other than that, I I'm happy. It just this is, this is good. Just curious on what's going on. That's all. So I, I can say, um, you know, we we have followed the proper procedure as defined by statute. Um, you know, over the 20 years I've been here. This is the first time I'm hearing this kind of feedback, and I'm certainly happy to forward any kind of new zoning bylaws to the board for your input mm -hmm. or consideration. Mm -hmm. That's simple. Mm -hmm. We have to notify other towns, regional mm -hmm. planning agencies. We have to notify a whole slew of people. Adding your board is really not difficult. And if the board's just up on what the intent of the change was, because there's still the possibility that if somebody's denied or approved a special permit, there's nothing saying in a butter can't appeal it right to the board. Or if someone's denied a special permit, the applicant's denied, technically they could come here to appeal their denial. Right. And that was another thing the planning board brought up was not only the one stop shopping, but if they issued the special permit and it needed to be appealed They've got you to keep it in town. Mm -hmm. Right, before it goes if to court. If you issued it, then there's no appeal process left for in town. It mm -hmm. goes to court. Mm -hmm. Right. So to keep it in town was another reason the planning board suggested or made the recommendation that they would be the special permit granting authority. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, and that makes a lot of sense. Yep. The... Um, Bill's statement is saying that, that they've never included this in the past. My only comment to that is if the zoning enforcement officer as well as the zoning board is involved in the process of, of suggesting this change before it goes to the board, it gets everybody on the same page. Everybody mm -hmm. has their input because now if we, we don't know anything about it, have any input into it, we may not agree with what you came up with the Sawa mm -hmm. or Mark or the zoning uh, uh, agent at that time may not. So so there's conflict. But if, if we work together as a team, as a group effort, we can come to the same conclusion that you came to. And I think we're there. And I'm just saying in the future changes mm -hmm. that this may be more beneficial to you. Would you suggest attending an EDC meeting when we make the initial proposal to get input and kind of mold it? So let's let's take car wash that will be coming up yep. um, do you what oh, do you yeah, want to get involved on, in the yeah, process you're not talking about this you're talking about other ones right next, yeah, the next one this one's yeah. pretty much this one's water water well, over I the would, dam i would want to have some input into it but i don't think as a um i should do it as an individual if um going yeah we could just have to be, be presented to the zba a, a joint meeting with zoning or um I mean, we we could we could do an EDC joint meeting. Our meetings are pretty flexible. Your your meetings are have the zoning enforcement agent here at the same time because he's typically here at our meetings anyways. You know, as long as we don't complicate car wash, including Dodge, Chevy, Ford, you know, <laughs> and God forbid you come up with a Mercedes and it's not listed. You can't make a list without on this gentleman. <laughs> And adding that word A N D, yeah, yeah, solidifies that everything is on. Yeah, I'm gonna run, comma, 
jump, comma, skip, comma, and squat. <laughs> so my suggestion is, is to come up, with your, come up with your comments and have have our legal counsel put commas or ands or buts or ifs in there if that's what he chooses to do. So are you uh, suggesting we should have a grammar teacher on call as opposed to counsel? <laughs> my my English teacher agreed with me and disagreed with town council. <laughs> but she. <laughs> we want to keep it in town, Mark. <laughs> so in the future, we'll make this a little more transparent and try to get some lead times and not wait to the last minute. Uh, this one because of the planning board continuing the last meeting kind of boxed me in because I need to get this on the warrant. Yep. This is all part of the project that's being announced Tuesday. So I have a question um, about what is your position on the EDC currently? Co-chairman. Co you co I, I, thought, I thought I'd heard that. Um, <clears throat> at the meeting on Monday, uh, the chairman of the Board of Slackman indicated that town is in need of business and we are in need of business that was made loud and clear at the prop two and a half override meeting we've been and we've been aware of that we, we've needed we've needed businesses in town for a very long time and I've been somewhat active up until the point where you realize that Douglas is uh, on a waiting list and, and businesses are moving west uh, they moved to 495 or to 128 that then to 495 in Franklin area and all, you know, they're busy, busy over there, and they are moving slowly this way. Um, I guess what I would hate to have happen is uh, a uh, a desperation movement. Uh, Douglas likes what it is. Mm -hmm. Douglas is a residential town that we need, that needs business. We do not need any business. Back in 1993, the Board of Selectmen also were in desperation mode, and they signed a document that sold property to a person who was going to bring in a large dump. You remember those days? I think you were I here. I lived in Webster at that time. Okay. I remember it clearly. So, um, I personally was active in that, um, and then I was active after that in the uh, airport problem that we had. We were going to be an airport, mm -hmm. which would have decimated the town. I think everybody well, knows that. Had something to do with that Some of the people that. <laughs> that was that, my that, that No, I'm just kidding. I'm just Actually, kidding. Actually, I think Hal Davis, I think his, uh, his property was uh, a run, one of the runways, I think, for the airport. I was Goodness sick of that four hour drive gone. to Newark. The whole town would have been decimated. <laughs> so I guess I, I, I just, I would, I would hope and I'm praying that. The EDC uh, keeps keeps in mind that the town of Douglas, while it needs additional funds, uh, is not desperate to the point that anything goes. That's kind of my line of thinking, because this project that will be announced Tuesday, when it's complete, you won't even see it. If you drive by it, you won't even know it's there. Hopefully your tax bill will, though. <laughs> Trying to bake it and ask it. Again, say, he's not, tell you it. not taking it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him outside after. Thank you. That's, it, it's, uh, that's it's, really, that makes it's me It's not happy. my position to announce any development. I understand. I, you're getting close, though. So right the, on a piece of paper. So the, pan, the other thing we, you know, that was going to come to Douglas was a horse track. A racehorse track on which yeah and that was probably I'm gonna say I was probably 16 17 then yeah I went that's to all he had was horses <laughs> 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 yeah. looking at stagecoach yeah. at 16 <laughs> wasn't even right. there yeah. yet yeah. Yeah. well um, Webster Road was dirt <laughs> yeah were they gonna use that as the racetrack yeah yeah so but anyway <laughs> in in your point we want something, of course, that's worthy of the town. It's I give you, for instance, I was with company this past weekend, 
and one of the guys I was with just retired from CVS, one of the big engineers. And I said to him, that would be great, Doug, was having a CVS here. But again, we only have 8,500 people. And he says, I'm sure they'd be happy to. And I says, I think we already asked them and they denied because we didn't have 10,000 at the mm. time. And I was probably, and I think when, when I was a selectman in town, we asked numerous people from Walgreens to CVS, yep. all of them, you know, uh, because of the Gilboa Street, it's so close to 146, mm -hmm. right? you know. Um, they're now looking at 18, 20,000 people for a population uh, for a commercial. If you're going to do something like a CVS where people have to co go to it, because you have to, you, your town has to dedicate itself to, to them. If you yeah, know. we've looked at CVS, we've yeah. looked at Walgreens, uh, Rite Aid, part of Walgreens now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of smaller ones that might come in, uh, but it's true. We we don't have a drugstore. How about Lynch's? Yeah. We had we had a drugstore. We don't have natural gas. Right. I mean, uh, our infrastructure needs to be built up before we can start attracting industry. We only have pipelines. We don't have natural gas, usable natural gas. We have dead pipelines. Oh, they, okay. We have a transmission line. Yeah. And for you, at one zoning board meeting, somebody asked you what was the size of that pipeline. I can tell you it's a 20-inch pressurized pipeline pressure to 700 PSI. Okay. For your knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> we ought to invite them to the, the ZBA meetings. Yeah. That? It's that useless <laughs> information that's all yeah. stuck up here, isn't it, Bob? <laughs> yeah. I've talked to the companies. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of those things were just plain missed the boat. Yeah. CVS yeah. is one of them because yeah. I personally had discussions with them. Yeah. yeah. And they were surrounded by CVSs. Right. Every surrounding town has a CVS. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they would not put one in because it would dilute the others. It, the Webster, us, Oxford, exactly. Oxford. Yeah. They already have our people going there. Yeah. That's correct. I go to the Webster one. Yeah. Yeah. So they already have our business. They do. What you need to do is get another uh, a brand name in, uh, a Walgreens maybe. Yeah. Uh, but their thought process is we already have the Douglas people coming here, mm -hmm. the ones we want. Yeah. Right. So do we do a... What is it? Costco? Uh, there's another. I know there's a Rite Aid. Uh, we've got a few of the guys looking at different companies, mm. but maybe it's in combination with a 55, uh, 55 and over community. Uh, now it makes a drugstore attractive well, because have. those people need. I, I don't want to use the word drug medication. Not. I don't want to use the word yeah. drugs. Yeah. We can always ask the state to give up some lo uh, land on Route 16 and on the Webster Road. <laughs> yes, we could. We do have they some land available. Money out of them, so. Yeah, they they own a third of us. Yep. Yeah. 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 They point that out to Charlie which, Baker as much as I can. Which straps us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's sad. But we're looking for clean industry. We're not looking for a, a nuclear waste disposal building. Put it that way. Uh, we're looking for clean buildings. No pig farms. Uh, I haven't talked to any pig farmers lately. <laughs> uh, uh, solar is clean. Um, areas that are already cleared, we're looking at areas to develop. So you're not changing the landscape of Douglas. Uh, we, we've got when, it, when Carol and I put together the 185 assemblage uh, behind Grainy Tech, we actually met with some of the people on West Street in Uxbridge. Didn't have to, but we right. did just to be good neighbors. Yep. I asked uh, one gentleman uh, what was his wish list, and he says, I'd like to see a large cannabis greenhouse go in. I said, what's your second one? He said, solar. I said, what's the thing you don't want in there? And he says, I don't want a warehouse in there. Well, we don't have any warehouses planned for that area. Yeah. Because of the truck Trucking. noise, the, the Trucking. lights, yep. diesel fumes. Uh, I'm if just, you do I'm put sure. one in, you want to keep it off to the side. I'm not sure how much Route 16 can support traffic-wise. Probably not much, but 146 will. Yes, it will. And so will 395. And Campanelli is getting well established. Campanelli and Uxbridge. Yep. Um, yep. They're doing this morning. Doing pot, right? What else is going in there? Anything? Well, Medline. Medline has an 800,000 square foot facility. 
warehouse. And there, what are they Medical doing? supplies. Medical supplies. Okay. Yeah. And we've been informed that they've already outgrown the building. <laughs> They're looking for up to a 2 million square foot footprint somewhere. Ooh. Because of COVID-19, that you just can't stockpile supplies anymore. Mm. There's such a demand for stockpiling supplies. There are 800,000 square foot buildings. They already outgrown it. Haven't even been in there a couple of months. Yep. And I think they just bought the third piece of property. The can <coughs> cannabis grow facility is the okay. middle piece. Yep. There was the third piece, and I think Bedline just bought that okay. to build another 500,000 square foot warehouse. So this area is hot. Uh, serendipity, that's, that okay. was in this morning's paper. Uh, all, right. all the notifications, the public notices. Oh, I didn't see it. Two week notices for all the uh, zoning law changes. And I believe that's Amazon. Rumor has it it's Amazon. That's what I heard. Hmm. You, you did too. Which are that, that seems to no, be the, the word. What road. was it? 550,000 yep. square foot Amazon building. Yep. <coughs> Which to them is small. Yeah, right. That's small. Yeah, but they'll put three of them within 10 miles of each other. Mm -hmm. um, my buddy in Chowton said there's one going in there, 600,000 in Chowton, Amazon. Hmm. Now, to get a size of these numbers, BJ's is 630, 630,000, and that's a big building. Down on Uxbridge? Yes. 630? 630,000. What kind of revenue does that kind of building bring involved? We looked at it uh, when it was initially built, it was valued at 40 million, then 20 years ago. If that size building came here right now, we'd be looking at probably six hundred thousand dollars in tax revenue, just on the property value. Because our rate is what sixteen sixteen dollars and change. That's half of the last override. <laughs> yeah. Use two and a half. <laughs> you're learning. <laughs> We're fast learners, but you're younger than I am. <laughs> I can only fit so many penguins on this iceberg, oh. <laughs> and this iceberg is melting. <laughs> Anybody else have anything for Bob? No. no. Had a nice Thank conversation. You so if you, if you have any questions, the public hearing is tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Um, any comments? Uh, we just I just need Harmony going into the, uh, the town warrant, the September 12th meeting amongst all the boards. I mean, we've all got to be rowing in the same direction to get, get this industry mm -hmm. coming in. Mm -hmm. And I think once the first project's done, we're, we'll be coming through with a couple more. They'll be just following in. Good. Great, well, I appreciate you coming in. Well, well thank, you. thank you for having me. Hard work. <clears throat> thank you. So who makes the motion to adjourn me? Uh, we, we have a couple we more. Got, couple oh, you oh, you've been around too things. long. Yeah. You know this all the. This is easy. still going. <laughs> yeah. Are there any questions? No, I'm good. No, oh, just a comment. Other than earlier. before Tuesday night. <laughs> all right. Great. Thank you, Bob. Thank all you right. so much. You're welcome. Okay. So what are we doing? So we get us a minute. We have the minutes of uh, June 10th. You have the minutes and you have this application. Right. Yep. Thanks, Bob. I'll just stick around to the end. You wrote sure. down the minutes, right? Sure. If you don't mind. No. Go ahead. I'm starting with that.
We'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June 10th as presented. Okay, we have a motion by Mrs. Holmes to approve the June 10th minutes as printed. We have a second. No second. Second by Mr. Bambara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the minutes of June 10th. Roll call vote on that now? Yes, we do. Um, aye, Dan Heaney. Oh, that's right. Aye, Pam Holmes. Aye, John Mabara. It's Patrick, aye. Okay. All right, we have the minutes of <coughs> July 8th. that we approve the minutes of July 8th as presented. We have a motion by Mrs. Holmes to approve the minutes of July 8th as presented. We have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Fitzpatrick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pam Abstain. Holmes, aye. Dan Heaney, aye. Abstain. John Bambara. Fitzpatrick, aye. Okay. Minutes are approved as written. We've last, um, uh, you don't know, Bill, if we've gotten any, um, I, since Maria's not here, I'll just pretend that you're, uh, right. you know what Maria, in Maria's mind. Do you know whether we've ever gotten any, um, or, were we going to get a, a um, certified plot plan from Mrs. Uh, Laramie? Yeah, that was on her to-do list. She was going to look in her files to see if she could get that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I can remind her. Yeah. I just didn't know. No, no. I'm talking about um, Mrs. That's La Colony, right? No, no. I'm talking to Hoff no. Road. Oh, Hoff Road. Road. Mrs. Laramie. How was uh, that hearing left? I guess she's coming she's back in a couple of months. The, on the, uh, Two next months. Month. Next right. month. We right. have not received. Boo. Any information? Okay, but yes, it's Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, in the, it's in this uh, the minutes right. of, about Mrs. Sullivan or Ms. Sullivan right. had the copy of the plans I'll ask for, for Old Colony. Those things. Yeah, it's just good to tie those yep. things up. Yep. Yeah, and I had also asked that there was uh, the copies of the information <laughs> for Laramie to be put in our packet for that meeting. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the minutes. Yeah, there was a copy of the plan. No information for. No. Um, the 2004 20, uh, place in the information. So I'm assuming that what I was looking for was, uh, I'm thinking maybe the information, uh, copy of the information from uh, conservation because she says in, let me see what it is. Yeah. So it was in the previous meeting. Yeah, it's here on the uh, June 10th, page two at the bottom. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so I, I had a last uh, a paragraph. I asked why the roof wasn't, was not shortened away from the line. Uh, she said Laramie responded, uh, it looked better that way and otherwise it would be closer to the brook. She said conservation approval. Commission approved the plan as long <coughs> It did not make the roof or the banner any larger than it existed. 
So there must be something on that if she got that determination. Okay. Um, and also there's something in there about the uh, planning board saying that they, as long as they didn't go any closer to the rear, which the rear would be the lake. But um, that's a statement that was made, so there must be something from the planning no. board as well. No, the planning board had a, as you know, they comment on applications and provide feedback to the board. Yep. Um, yeah, so just a copy on that. that was all. But but they didn't have a plan, so that was the only comment right. the board had. No she information? Yeah. She, she didn't submit a plan by no. that point. No, but that, she was still put on, that was put on their sheet that they got asked? That's all the board, planning board said was it's confusing. My yeah, no, but it was put on the sheet. It was put on the sheet. Yeah, so just a copy of that. Oh, that sheet. Yeah, back. That yeah just so what? Yep. We're Got not, he should, she, a, a, B, C, he D. should, all, yeah. all this stuff at the meeting because that's what we're doing is going in circles. Yes. So that's why yeah. I, I requested to have the yep. backup information so we're accurate yes. on what I'm talking. Yeah. Yep. Is that invoice down there, John? Is that the invoice? And the last um, <clears throat> item we had tonight was um, the town received a, uh, I guess you call it an application for someone looking to fill a vacancy on this board. Yeah. It's been vacant for quite some time. So the Board of Selectmen was looking for a recommendation. I think Mr. Farge has been on every board that's in this town since in his life. He's been on zoning, he's been a selectman. He's Since Christ was a corporal. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So, um, I, I think it would be great for the board. Yeah. 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 The only thing that I see on here is he checked off full member. We have an open associate, associate. Uh, spot, which mm. is always a good place for a Starter. New yep. people to start right. to get right. familiarized with the yeah. board before yeah, they that get makes sense. placed on something. And the only other thing that I've seen on here is uh, number 10. How many times during the last year have you attended a meeting at the board? Yeah. He said only watched on TV. I believe he came to at least one meeting, maybe two. Yeah, yeah I think last year, about yeah. a year ago. Yeah. Exactly. Other than that, I, we need, we need uh, to fill that vacancy. Yeah, it's been vacant for a long time. I agree. I mean, I think Ronnie is uh, looking for the best interests of the town of Douglas is, and and perhaps you know understanding the the reason for zoning will encourage yep. people. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll um, I'll let Just go to you, Suzanne know that the board. Uh, sure. I guess maybe we need to. Maybe we should take a vote. Yeah. <laughs> I'll move that we recommend Ron Forget to the zoning board uh, for a alternate position. Okay. Second that. All right, we have a motion by Mrs. Holmes, seconded by Mr. Fitzpatrick, to uh, recommend the appointment of Mr. Forget as an alternate member to the CBA. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Roll call. Yep. Dan Heaney? Aye. Pam Holmes? Aye. John Mabara? Aye. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Okay. All right, we don't have any other agenda items tonight. If somebody would. Can Bob uh, make a motion to uh, call us to. Uh, sure, no, why not? No. <laughs> I'll, make a mo I'll make a motion to uh, adjourn. I thought it was going to be a surprise. <laughs> Second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Mubara uh, to adjourn and seconded by Mrs. Holmes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, aye Dan Heaney. Pam Holmes, aye. Umbara, I. Fitzpatrick, I. <laughs> okay, the meeting is adjourned at 8, 818.